Good afternoon and welcome to another Kerfuffle Showcase. I am delighted to have back on the show Graham Edwards looking resplendent there in his Kerfuffle gear from Ravensworth. And not just Ravensworth, Graham, a new Ravensworth. Congratulations. That's right, Simon. And uh, I've, I've got, the, uh, got the Kerfuffle mug. And uh, I, I tried to find the, the sort of pinkest shirt I could find this morning as well. So, yeah, you that, can't. Uh, I, know, I know your neck of the woods. You can't wear too much pink in the northeast <laughs> and get away with it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Genuinely, after we had that quick catch up, because you would, obviously you were uh, awarded in the top uh, top forty uh, EA Masters Innovations and Ideas, and straight after that. Uh, the day afterwards, I think it was, the big news came out that obviously you were going independence again after ZBG sold to your new owners. So that must yeah. be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're really pleased with the news. Um, I mean, Ravensworth has been owned by Zoopla for three years, three, three, and, three and a bit years now. Yeah. Um, you know, Zoopla has changed enormously over that time. Uh, they're a fantastic company, um, and I, I personally feel privileged to have to have been involved in Zoopla in some way shape or form for the last three years but it was time for the for Ravensworth to move on yeah um, you know Zoopla was owned and uh, had an executive team which was very very different in September 2017 when they first acquired Ravensworth the strategy has changed uh, under Charlie Bryant's leadership um, yeah. and you know their, their their real focus now is on the on the portal uh, and on the software side and it was yeah. through discussions with Charlie, we felt it was right to, to find a new home for Ravensworth. Uh, and that new home, um, as of the 1st of December, when we complete the, the transfer, will be the printed group. Um, great. Great. And so, I mean, anything we were talking about it off there, though, is just, you know, being great, a part of a big group like that obviously has a huge advantages. But the one thing it will inevitably do is stop you being as agile as you want to be when you want to go in a particular direction or anything else like that. There's always boxes to tick and everything else. And in a, we're, look, we're going to be talking about that over the course of here. In such a fast moving world, you need to pivot like that, don't you? You do, you do, and to and to be fair on on Zoopla, um, they have always allowed us to do that. So Ravensworth is, was probably, to my knowledge, one of the only acquisitions that Zoopla made that wasn't that wasn't fully integrated uh, into all of their sort of functional areas. It was always kept as a standalone business. So we were always sort of uh, to to a large extent in control of our own destiny. Um, you know, are able to set our own strategy, uh, pool our own resources. Yes, we had the the backing of a, a large corporate like Zoopla, and yes, we could draw down on on sort of sort of monetary resources and get get investment going and things like that. But we've always been fairly independent. And okay. when we move up over to the printed group, I mean, the the printed group actually, uh, and I don't know whether the, your viewers would know this, but the printed group are previous owners of Ravensworth. Yeah. I do, yeah. Um, yeah, so we're actually going back to our, to our, our roots, as it were. Uh, yeah. they, you know, they know us really well. We know them really well. They've been a major supplier of print to us over the last three years while we've been part of Zoopla. Um, we kind of feel like we're going back into the family, uh, which is fantastic. You know, it's it's not going to be a, a strange experience for anybody. Um, yeah, good. You know, and obviously at the moment we're working through uh, the sort of legal process in terms of Tupi. We've got a lot of things to transfer in terms of assets and systems and uh, databases. And all. yeah, I know you've been through it all. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's not an easy time, but as of first December, everything will be complete. Early Christmas present for you all. Well, that's great. Uh, Zed, hats off for you. Yeah, I suppose going back to your old owners, it's a bit like the Godfather, isn't it? Just when you think you're out, they can you back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that's fantastic, and there'll be no surprises there as well. So, so yeah. I mean, just on that point though, what do they, um, do, do they do they feel now that they've got, got more opportunities for you in terms of understanding that the potential that, that that there is now at Ravensworth, and and how has that changed? Yeah, that's a great question. I think I think the thing is first and foremost they understand print. You know, and, and our core business uh, is, as always has been and still is print. I mean, there's lots of other things that we do, which we'll, we'll get on to. Um, but they really do understand print. Um, that, that's their love. That's their whole sort of purpose in life. So it makes real good sense for us to be to be part of that. 
Um, there will be other opportunities to, to, for us to find sort of sy synergies, if you want to use that kind of word, uh, mm. in terms of where we can pull resources, where we can pull resources and customer service, where can, we can utilize some of their systems and processes that we don't have today. They have a great CRM system, um, for example, um, that, that can deliver like real good insights on okay. sort of clients, um, understanding sort of the makeup of clients, sort of segmentation models, looking for to extract opportunities from that um, that we don't necessarily have available to us today. You know, that's just one example. Uh, there's probably loads when we get in there and we start yeah. working with them where we can we, we can start to exploit opportunities. Yeah, and look, I don't suppose it ever really uh, created that much of an issue, but because you do obviously integrate with all of the CRMs anyway, but they must feel much, you know, the other CRMs now must feel much more happy about dealing with you and and, and, and deepening that relationship because obviously ostensibly they, they, they were a competitor before, weren't they? So it must have, it, that must that must really help the, the whole, uh, you know, collaboration point going forwards. Yeah, that's that, that. That is a really good point. And again, you know, ju just to be sort of really fair and transparent on Zoopla, Zoopla never ever once stopped us going to a, a competitor CRM company and saying, "Do you want to integrate with Ravensworth?" They never did that. Um, we integrated with a couple of Zoopla CRMs. We were allowed to keep the integrations we had with um, uh, other competitor CRMs, uh, and you know we'll continue to do that moving forward. And we'll still maintain the great relationship that we have with with Zoopla um, in terms of you know seeking out further integrations and further synergies with them. So I think it's all all really positive. Um, the, other, the other thing I guess to mention, Simon, just while I think about it. Uh, I think it was um, Property Industry I where the news first came out. I think it came out in Property Industry I. There was a question on there about whether the existing management team was going to continue. Mm. Uh, and the answer to that is yes. So okay. uh, so the, 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 the existing management team in Ravensworth will continue. I will continue leading the organization. Uh, and everything was ba it's basically just going to be as is. Uh, and the only difference... That customers should notice is things should continue to improve. Um, you know, there, there'll well, be no fight, no, isn't it? Because you've got stability, you've got the knowledge there that obviously has taken you to the place that you are, and that's great. Good, good, excellent. Yeah. Cool. Well, look, um, okay, today we're talking about uh, game changers in, in print marketing, though. Obviously, you're specialist, obviously. Um, especially this uh, subject there as well. And look, we've just spoke about it. Ravensworth has been around for absolutely decades now, printing for printing for property and everything else there. Um, apart from obviously this this momentous news of the last last week or so, how's the company changed though in the last few years anyway, aside from that? Well, I think as, as we were talking about before you, you, you hit the live button, what, what did you call Ravensworth? The grandfather of the suppliers yeah, are. <laughs> I mean you were, you were always you know I'd, I'd walk in and there would be the Ravensworth stand at whatever whatever bash it was I think yeah one of the if not uh, not the, well, not the uh, granddaddies or, or the, one of the first ones yeah yeah I mean the company was founded in 1973 so what 47 years ago I mean I, I, oh, I would have when been I was like born. A, when I was born yeah. before you were born <laughs> no, that I, I, I would have been a two a two year old <laughs> but I mean, that, I mean, that's that, that's how long the company's been going, and and you know, I, I don't know all the history of the the company, but um, it was started as a as actually a photography company, uh, yeah. and and we we, the, we used to go around taking photographs of how, how in the inside of houses for estate agents, and then we would stick we would develop those photographs and stick those photographs on a on a word what, what then would have been a word document or or a, a paper paper brochure with you know stick on photographs and then we'd, we would supply that back to the estate agent and that went on for a, a number of years and as a, as a result of that the company was able to build up a, a, a good base of, of customers and then I think in the mid 90s uh, the company started printing um, and then it was really when the the sort of the the launch of the the digital presses started that the company really really took off uh, did really well. Built built up a massive base of, of clients, and then eventually uh, was bought by the printed group. I think yeah. that was two thousand and seven. I think that was from from uh, my recollection. Uh, and then uh, just you know, it's gone from strength to strength un under that leadership as well. I've only been with the company since April twenty eighteen. I think it was so two and a half years for me. 
Um, it's been a, a fantastic experience, uh, you know, and we're, we're sort of now, I would say, we're into possibly the, the sort of third phase of Ravensworth where we're really focusing on the technology aspects of how customers um, get their print from us. So if you think about, you know, in the early days, it was sort of photographs, stick on prints, paper brochures. Then it was the digital printing phase, um, which, you know, which made things much, much easier for both Ravensworth and the clients. Uh, and now we're into sort of like what I would call a technical phase, which is where we're building great technology to enable, you know, faster, simpler, smarter print, yeah. you know, easier for the estate agent um, and, you know, trying to make it all sort of dead slick. So we save agents time and money so they can focus on, you know, what they need to be doing, which is generating listings and, and marketing properties. Uh, and that's the sort of phase that we're in now. And that's what we're all about for the next few years. That's very, that's very interesting. And, and we, um, I was talking to your neighbours just down, down the road at I Am Property earlier to, to Jordan there. And I said, obviously, they're well known for their services around auctions, but actually underpinning them as a, as a fa uh, fantastic business is a very, very strong technical um, and indeed dev team that they've got there. And that's exactly the same as you're just highlighting, you know, with your good selves. Anyone who's had the, the, the luxury of going around your, um, you know, your fantastic factory, uh, it, it, it just seeing the the scale and the efficiency. I mean, there's just so much technology that God clearly underpins that. It's almost a robot. I don't know if you call it robotics, but it certainly felt like that to me when you see the whole Nissan prints and everything's just just going along along like that. And, and you, you're extending that out again and again, aren't you? So really blending, making it just okay. The, the end the end game is still the same. You get these fantastic glossy brochures and other 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 uh, consumables like that. But the ease of use to actually create them is just its mind-numbingly easy, isn't it, these days? It is mind-numbingly easy. And, and I think this is where, you know, we, what we've been working hard on over the, over the last sort of 12 months, I would say, maybe even longer, is sort of going back to our core purpose and thinking, what are we, what are we really about? Why do we, what, why do we exist? And the reason we exist is to, is to try and play our, our part or our small part, however you want to call it, and making estate agents' lives easier. Now, originally that that was about the print per se. So you know, a great printed product um, at a great price with great service. You know, all those things we've, we've done really, really well over the last few years. But you know, lots of print companies can do that now, Simon. You know, just being totally transparent. Um, that's really not a not a, a USP anymore. Yeah. We, we do that, and that's our bread and butter. What agents want is a uh, to, to be able to take that print headache away from them, and and we enable that through the technology. You know, we're talking. I think on the the last webinar we did the top forty supplier webinar about uh, in one of our new applications the the in, uh, intelligent PDF interrogator. Yeah. You know, customers can now drag and drop um, a piece of artwork into onto our platform. The, it, it, it recognizes exactly what that piece of artwork is, the size, the orientation, whether it's a brochure, how many pages it is, whether it's a flyer, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and all the agent has to do is say, what quantity do, do I want? And, you know, do I want it like laminated or glossy or whatever? And they don't even have to do that if they've got that set up in their print preferences. And then they just hit the button, bang, it goes off to print. 15 minutes it'll hit the print presses and they get it the next day and and that's that's about us trying to take that headache away from them so they can completely focus on what is going to add value to their own business yeah, and look, that comes back time and time again. Let's have a look at a couple of your reviews on there. So this is from Stephanie Doe at Mitchell's Estate Agents. We cannot fault both Adel Wallace and Alex Hanmore for their professional, helpful manner. They're both always very prompt with replying to emails and accommodating with their amendments requests. Nothing seems too much effort. Adele keeps us informed of any upcoming offers, promotions with direct mail outs, etc., which we would ordinarily miss. Thank you for your continued help and support. And then a second one just here. Uh, great customer service and responsive to all requests. Toolkit is great for ordering office stationery. is easy to use. Highly recommended Gemma from Queely & Co. And then the hat trick. 
Uh, Ravens with provide an exceptional digital printing service from our friends at the Academy Sarah there. So look, you know, always nice to always nice to hear here, isn't it, to have that. And so so Graham, just outline to us today what are the main offerings in print that you do? We've we've spoke about a couple there, you know, actually um, what's it Gemma just mentioned, office stationery and everything else. Talk us through the different offerings you've got in the in the print realm. So in the print in the print realm, it's virtually pretty much everything that um sort of relates to to an estate agent's business from sort of e even sort of small things like business cards to letterheads to to compliment slips all the kind of stationary kind of stuff through to um company brochures docu folders uh you know through to property brochures um through to direct mail uh, uh and uh, royal mail door drops uh, the whole kit and caboodle, really, Simon. I mean, our core business, as I said, you know, is 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 always print, and it probably always will be print. But the thing is, you know, what a lot of people don't know, um, because because we're kind of let's be honest, we, we, we're known as the brochure company. Yeah, you know, and 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 that's what we're trying hard to change. We're trying to hard to change through our brand and our technology and all of the all of the marketing that we're doing, all the things we're doing to change that perception of just being the brochure company because we're not. Yes, we do brochures. Of course, we do brochures. It's our yeah. bread and butter. But you know, we do a lot of digital stuff. We do we build a lot of CGI actually for yeah. uh, for land and new homes uh, and house builders. We do a lot of direct mail. We do a lot of Royal Mail door drops. We do branded merchandise Ooh. as well that not many not many um, people know about. And then through the COVID pandemic, um, we've also started doing a lot of branded PPE. So, you know, yeah, yeah, we've done it. We've actually done a fair bit of PPE, would you believe? Um, and it's, you know, we can do it branded up to agents. We can get their logos put on the masks uh or or you know the floor stickers the the sort of social distancing stickers whatever it is we can all we can get branded up and printed um so we do a whole raft of things you know in in relation to you know what a state agent needs uh and you know we're we're really proud of of, of what we can deliver on that front so is it would it be fair to say you're more you're more actually just a brand company these days aren't you rather than just just print and everything else brand is really it seems strikes me as there is the is the core linking factor in all of these things you're talking about all these product lines yeah i mean i think you could say we're, we're a branding company because we you know we even do we even do uh, websites uh for for estate agents as well and we, we have a design studio in in uh, in ravensworth but you know i think we've got to be Truth, truthful with ourselves and say look you know and not one company can do be all yeah. things to all to all people and we have to choose what what we do best and what we excel at and what we're always going to do best and what is our core business and yes we do the digital we do the direct mail we do the door drops we do the merchandise um you know we have that sort of stable if you like but our core business and what we absolutely excel at is always going to be print yeah. um, and what we do do so if, if there are things that our clients want um we'll partner with a company that can do that brilliantly so an example would be um i don't know whether you saw it simon but just recently we've uh, re released some news that we've um done a done an integration with data loft yeah uh, been work, been work, yeah been working with rory and the team for some time we've done a yeah. couple of things with data loft um, we're able to to draw their property insights into our marketing toolkit platform, so yeah. customers can bring that into their print templates and then just send them to print. Um, you know, we we wouldn't ever yeah. ever sort of uh, envisage ourselves producing property insight data. You know, that's yeah. not something that we would do. Um, so we've partnered with who we feel are the best in the industry. And you know they're a great team up at Data Loft. Rory's a great guy. Sandra's yeah, lovely. Uh, and, you know, they're doing a fantastic job for us. And that's, well, they've, that's they've, got, they've got the content, haven't they? You've got the delivery mechanism, and that exactly. works. Yeah, and I, I, I know this will happen because I've heard people say it. But it strikes me that a lot of what people say when they're talking to you is, "Oh God, I didn't know you did that. I, you know, just didn't realise." You did so much. And so it's really a case of, you know, come have a conversation with us. You've heard a few of the areas here. Talk to your account managers and really just understand the full gamut of services that you can provide. Well, the one the one thing I haven't mentioned, actually, you just reminded me, uh, is we have a service called Photo Fixer. Of course. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is great. 
Yeah, we have a service called Photo Fixer, which is sort of similar to Doctor Photo. Yeah, um, but uh, you, you'll find that like most agents know Doctor Photo, they don't really know Photo Fixer. So there's things like that that we can just do better at in terms of promoting pr promoting our own sort of products and services. Okay, okay, that's perfect. Well, obviously, print, as you said, though, is, is your core is your core thing, though. Obviously, a lot of people have heralded the death of print over the years, haven't they? I, I know that that's not true, but um, you know, is print still as popular? What can you tell us about that? It is really popular, Simon, and um, you know, you and I have sort of talked about this before, especially in this sort of age of what what we what we in Ravensworth call sort of digital chaos. Yeah. Um, you know, our di digital confusion. And you you know yourself, you know, how many emails you sort of delete every day, uh, you know, more and more. Uh, and, you know, the, the other sort of word, uh, sort of term is uh, something called ad fatigue. You know, you go, on, you go onto a website now and you drop cookies everywhere. And Ooh. anywhere you go on the web now, yeah, you, you'll see the same advert pop up again and again and again. It's the same thing. And eventually your, your sort of brain gets sort of tuned out to that. There are yeah. actually scientific studies, aren't they, that you literally do tune it out. So there is a fine, uh, there is a fine balancing uh, line between, you know, the the, uh, the 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 subliminal advertising, which does obviously have an effect, and literally being turning you in a blinker to just almost just not not absorbing it at all, not focusing on that part of the part of the screen anymore. Yeah, and and I think it's fair to say that 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 sort of thing is happening more and more and more. So I think especially when we're, because we're in this sort of working from home, remote sort of COVID pandemic environment, if you like, um, and th there is this sort of certain amount of digital chaos. And what we're finding, and what our what our clients are are telling us is that print most definitely has a place. You know, it has a real important place in in their sort of marketing mix. And we're seeing a sort of we would we would say like maybe a little bit of a resurgence of print in that whole space now because you know it is tangible. It's yeah. something that you know you, you can't just delete it. Uh, yeah, you can put it in a waste paper basket or, or whatever it is. But I think most people keep something that's printed. They'll, they'll keep it for reference uh, or they'll pin it up on the in, in the kitchen when they're ready to to look at it again or refer back to it. Um, and you know our agency, particularly you know the direct mail service that we that we um, do for state agents, they say that works really well. That generates list you know listings and valuations for them. Um, you know we do that really really regularly. And I I don't think print is ever gonna no. disappear. And you hear those tales, don't you, all the time of like uh, somebody coming back to an agent, literally as you've said from 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 a literally a bit of marketing collateral like that, a brochure, a, a flyer or something that was put through the door many, many years before and everything else. There is that literally goes in, okay, when the time's ready, we're going to pick that out and do it. So it really does have a life, a lifetime like no, no other medium really, does it? It does. It does, Simon. And, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, how come you know, how come Zoopla bought a print company when uh, you know they have a portal and they have all the listings on the portal, they have all the lovely photographs on the portal? But the fact is that you know people who are going to look at houses still like to have something in their hand. They still like a brochure. And and the other sort of flip side to that is, it's really good for the agents to have that available as well. You know, it really says something about the the stature. Of the the actual agent, I mean, we we uh, we moved house uh, a couple of years ago, and when we were looking, I always remember one agent, which I won't mention. Um, you know, we went to view the property, and they give us this sort of dog-eared A4 piece of paper, yeah. you know, with a few scribbles on mm -hmm. it, and you know, it was printed on a like forty-five pound. And just never going to be at the races, are they? You know, they're never, they're never going to be at the races exactly. So, so print print is also, is actually also good for the agent to show you know, how good they are, how much care they're taking uh, over what they do, and that sort of prestigiousness about it, especially when it's, you know, a high-quality paper stock uh, and it's a glossy or something like that. So I think it's always going to be around, Simon. I think the question is, is you know, uh, what what do agents need to do in terms of that mix? How do they use digital best and how do they use print best? How do the campaigns become sort of coordinated uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. I think that's the key. So let me ask you on that question then. Is the is the old uh, the old mantra uh, print versus digital? Is it a false argument? 
Uh, I think it probably is a false argument. If I'm honest, I don't. I don't. I think now even more than ever, it's it's not one versus the other because I think we're all used to receiving an array of different things and different sort of medias and and stuff. And I think as long as they join up, um, you know, a lot as long as the campaigns don't look sort of disparate and disjointed and have different messages and so on um i think you know it's it's not going to be a case of di digital versus print or print versus digital it's a, it's a case of what's what campaign is going to work best mm. and how best do i get to the different audiences using which sort of media uh and i think you know we all have to accept there's a place for digital and there's also going to be a place for print moving forward as well yeah yeah, great. And and so we spoke about it earlier, um, the, the amount you invest in technology, this strong uh, techie bed there. How does that how does that help those estate agents, obviously, with their print marketing, the technology that you provide? Well, we, as, I, as I say, we, you know, we've been doing a lot of work in the last sort of 12 to 18 months on our platforms. And right now we've got there's a couple of platform print platforms that we've got. Um, the first is called Marketing Toolkit. Now, Marketing Toolkit has been around for a, a number of years now. Um, we have some big, big clients using Marketing Toolkit, companies like uh, the Connells Group Leaders, Romans, um, Jackson Stops, and just you know, big sort of multi, multi-branch um, clients. And that's really where sort of Marketing Toolkit has its place because it has things like um, – uh, you know, central budget authorizations, um, you know, has a lot of admin tools associated with it that group group marketing can sort of use um, when, when it's like a multi-branch situation. Um, but at it, it, its core, it's a, it's a web to print platform. Um, it, it's got, you know, a, 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 an image library on there. Um, you can control your brand. You can uh, run direct mail campaigns from there. And you can even buy your branded merchandise from there as well. And it's a fully integrated system and what, what we would call like a, a one-stop shop. Yeah. Um, but it is it is aimed at sort of larger clients. Um, so what we've done is we, we've also introduced in the last sort of 12 months something called My Ravensworth. Mm -hmm. which is a completely different platform. Now, my Ravensworth will eventually, it will eventually grow to be the marketing toolkit. Mm -hmm. uh, and eventually, you know, marketing toolkit at some point will be looking to migrate clients over to my Ravensworth. My Ravensworth is a, is a platform which is built on a different technology. Um, and it's, a, it's basically a suite of applications. Uh, and it's really the first time that all of our services are there in one place. So a customer can lo log in and they can access all of our services, whether it be photo fixer, whether it be instant print, whether it be something that we've got on there called instant marketing. Um, and that's uh, and, and that's the sort of beauty of my Ravens with it's so much faster, it's so much simpler, it's so much easier to use. And the technology that we've deployed, uh, once a customer sends a job to print through my Ravensworth, it gets to the presses um, in most cases within 15 minutes, so they can get the product product the next day. And you know the, the other sort of byproduct of my Ravensworth um, is because we've, we've because we've built it through a suite of disparate applications, albeit in one place. Um, those applications can be plugged into third-party CRMs, which you meant you know for example you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So instant instant print can be plugged into Data Loft, which it is can be plugged into Jupix, which it is, can, can be plugged into other CRMs and third-party websites. So they can get the clients using those websites and CRMs can still get the Ravens with experience when they want to print. Um, and that's the beauty of the way we've developed that technology and that's our, our strategy moving forward. It's mighty impressive that going to print in 15 minutes, isn't it? I mean, that's, uh, I can't even begin to think of the logistical steps that you've needed to kind of, clear up to make that to make that possible i'm right in thinking uh, does it work 24 hours around the around the year or it literally work i mean that's thing that's just yeah incredible. i mean that, that that's the other thing because uh, you know everything's a an online platform now i mean we get orders um i've seen orders come through at like nine o'clock at night not not that i'm sad enough to be <laughs> <laughs> that time, but uh, yeah, no, seriously, I, I've seen orders come at uh, nine o'clock at night, and orders on a Sunday as well, you know. And when we get in on a on a Monday morning, you can see there's a whole load of orders come through on a Sunday, and that that just shows you just how busy um, agents are. 
you know, and, yeah. and they, they, they don't always have time for these things. And that's why they're doing them after hours. That's why they're doing it on a Sunday. So if we can make that much easier for them, which we will continue to do, that can only be, be, be benefiting them, you know. Um, but yeah, it is 24 seven and the, the production facility is 24 seven as well. It's normally um, three sets of eight hour shifts. Uh, and obviously with the, the COVID pandemic, we've had to be, um, you know, really sort of careful about making everything COVID secure, all the right. machines being wiped down and sanitized and social distancing and sort of plastic screens and stuff. And the guys are doing, doing a fantastic job and that's how we're operating at the moment. Yeah, you don't need an extra headache like that on top of running a <laughs> churning out millions and millions of brochures. And then, oh, can you add a can you add in these safety concerns as well? Thanks for that. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. I think one of the things you were saying there, though, given the size and uh, size of some of those agents as well, you know that that gives great peace of mind, doesn't it, in terms of scalability there? And you're not going to have any troubles in terms of obviously, well, you know, because let's be honest, as you said before. There are loads and loads of local printers that agents have used over time, but one of the recurring themes with those guys is that they they get too busy, they can't deliver. You know, the times, uh, you know, the, the time just gets away from them, and we know how important that launch is to agents. Um, it's just not worth risking, is it? It's a really good point you make, Simon, and uh, you know, it's not something I've, I've mentioned before on, on the calls, but you know, what, what we're able to do is scalability. We can basically um, deal with a, a, a single branch independent agent all the way through to like a, a 1500 branch, um, you know, co corporate, multi, you know, multi branch agency um, or a franchise, you know. Um, we, we do it all and our, <clears throat> and our platforms are scalable and that's, you know, what, what we're able to do. And, you know, you mentioned the, the high street printer. Ooh. So I think first and foremost, you know, I'll be the first to say, you know, we've got to protect the high street. You know, yeah. it's, it's so important, especially in this in this particular sort of environment and time. Um, and many of our customers tell us that, you know, they like going to a high street printer. They like supporting their local businesses. Yeah. And I think that's, that's absolutely, you know, that's admirable. That's that's absolutely fine. But at some point to, your, to what you've just mentioned, you know, an agent may find that they, they outgrow what that high street printer is able to do for them or, or the high street, street printer can't get the pricing that we can get because they can't do it at scale. Yeah. Um, so at some point they might. Let's be honest, Graham. It's when you take it from a hobby into being a business, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just too professional. He's look, yeah, support them in, in other way, in other ways, but actually your business has to come first. And if they look, if they can, if, if, if they can produce it at the price with the convenience and everything else, there's a different conversation because we're in the world of competition. The, the yeah. challenge and difficulty is that they very, very rarely do, don't they? Certainly without, without the level of consistency that you can achieve. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, there'll, there'll come a point where the high street printer is no longer able to provide the service that the estate agent wants if mm. they're going to continue to sort of grow their own business. Um, I mean, the other thing to mention alongside the sort of high street printer is is the estate agents who um, print in-house. I was great. I was just about to ask you on that, and that's fascinating. I was going to. I've been trying to think of a regular series on these things, and I've I've labelled them at Whaley's Whaley's ostrich moments. And and is agents one of one of their ostrich moments thinking that printing in house can ever be a cost effective solution? Because you hear horror stories, don't you, about how much that 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 ink costs. I, I remember seeing some some quote that it was actually based on volume more expensive than champagne. Uh, you know, and they but very rarely do they actually assess those the cost there. And I know you've struggled with that before. How do I bring this to light? How do I make it clear that actually that you've got a, a you've got a money pit sat in the corner of that office there. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And there's still a, a lot, a lot of estate agents who print in house it, under the belief that it's more cost effective for them to do that. I mean, I've been to to an agent where they had five people sat in a back room with about four big Xerox printers going all the time. There were stuffing envelopes. 
do, doing all sorts. But and, but that's what they wanted to do, and it is a difficult it's a difficult sort of mindset to to change. And you, what you need to do is to put numbers in front of them and yeah. get them to understand exactly what you know what their overall cost is of doing that, because it's not just the ink. It's not just the the printer costs. It's the labor costs. It's the overheads in terms of the building. Um, sure. You know, it's 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 yeah, all. Well, you said five, five people out back. Yeah, the labor costs alone. That's the one that that's that sunk cost that nobody looks at. What what we you know? I, I don't know if those five people could be turned to prospecting, whatever else. But it, the, the effects on the business would be transformational, wouldn't they? Absolutely. And, you know, what they don't realize is, and you, you know, and I don't want to sort of promote Ravens with too much because I think this is a, like a, a sort of factual webinar, isn't it? But what, what, what they don't realize is... Don't worry about that. Okay. I'm quite happy with the hard sell here. Right, okay. <laughs> what, what they don't realize is that they can actually come to us and buy like 16 brochures for, mm. for, cheap, for cheap. When you break it down, it actually works out cheaper than them doing it themselves. And you know they get it, they get it like all, all that headache, all taken away from them. They get a professional uh, brochure, which is exactly what what they want. They get it the next day. Uh, it looks great for their own clients, um, and they can actually it can actually work out cheaper in the end for them to do that. So I would encourage agents, especially in this this sort of period that we're in, Simon, where you know you imagine those five people in that back room, they'd not yeah. be able to work like that now. They, they've got to be so yeah they've got to be social distancing and all that kind of stuff so if, if an agent is really considering whether they can co continue to, to work like that they should come to us and just try just try us and look you know what can you do for us um can you make it cheaper for us to come to you and we'll talk about it the uh one of the the things that needs to be stressed again is once you get uh, and look, I, I was going to say mon uh, the monopolies provide you clearly that you're not a monopoly, but you are by far the market leader in print. And one of the, the, the big benefits you get from having that is the scale of your logistical infrastructure as well, isn't it? Which is a little understood. Your ability to literally have um, be delivering and uh, having your own teams deliver that means that you can, uh, you know, start to challenge the, 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 the common uh, conceptions that, you know, it has to be 50 brochures as a minute and everything else because everybody always knows don't they it sells on they, they will always tell you it's so it sells on the first brochure or something like that and then you've got 49 brochures sat there you know way to way the fact you can get it down to was it 16 you just said there 16 we, we can do 16 yeah 16 is incredible, isn't it? So you can look, of course, there's loads of people that will go for mass orders and everything else, but that really, you know, makes you a very efficient and lean organization, doesn't it? If you obviously if you if you don't have to waste anything. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, for sixteen brochures, I, I I can't remember exactly off the top of my head because I'm, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't I can't get my head around all of the detail that we do day in day out, but I'm sure you know, sixteen brochures works out at something like, I don't know what it is, sort of sixty pence a brochure or something like that, which is which is far far cheaper than you you would get sort of printing printing on your yeah. your in house. I think we've done that to death. We, look, we've come to a consensus there. Use Ravensworth. Okay. Um, right. In terms of, you mentioned Data Loft earlier, and I love, you know, obviously I love, I love, love those guys, love what they do. I uh, think it's just such an obvious point to be able to have that mechanism to deliver using you guys again to really put that in front of people, that vital, local, hyper local data is brilliant. Um, how do they? How do your clients actually? How do they get access to that? Is it via that online tool? Is it essentially there so they can literally just go in and then select, as you said, the the marketing collateral from an assets library or something like that? Yeah. Well, I mean, first and foremost, they've got to be sort of mutual customers of Ravensworth and Data Loft, so they have to have a Data Loft subscription. There's um, no, no extra charge, is there? There's not like a charge for for the integration per se you just have to be no. a client of the businesses great okay no, yeah. no in actual fact we 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 can do the integration we do the integration for free it's it's yeah. that's something that we just we want to do um and first and foremost as i say they've got to have a data loft subscription if they don't have a data loft subscription they can talk to data loft and yep. and uh, there, there's a new there's a new customer for data loft they can get um, they can get their their kerfuffle deal as well with data loft so one month free so they exactly they can get their kerfuffle deal from data loft um so yeah and once they've got their subscription 
And that basically opens up access to the API. So uh, once they get into our marketing toolkit site uh, and they're, they're looking at their, their data loft template, they're able to easily um, populate that template in, in real time with the data that they need um, and then send that send that to print. Uh, and that's, it's, it's really, it's, it's so easy to do, Simon, because of the technology. I'll tell you what I'd love to do, Graeme. Let's can we get a video of that in action? That would be a lovely little one to kind of. So it obviously brings it to life, doesn't it? If you can kind of see that. But anyway, that's a that's an aside. So so is is that kind of data loft uh, thing? Is that part of those kind of API driven applications that you were talking about earlier as well? That that side of it isn't because it works in marketing toolkit. But on right. the, on, on the flip side, um, what what we've also done with data loft is we've got our instant print application on the data loft inform website okay <laughs> excuse me so it's kind of a two-way sort of partnership we've got going on here so if they have their own clients on their website they can actually click on the application from the data yeah. loft website and send um send a, a piece of property uh you know like a, a one page um in your property insights whatever it is they can send that to print from the data loft website it comes straight to ravensworth they get the ravensworth experience when they open up the app uh, and you know it's it's a seamless um uh, piece of integration great that, that does sound really really impressive and, and so are there other areas where you've collaborated with third parties but not just data loft but other others as well yeah, there are, and you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, this is this is really sort of the way where we're looking to head now in terms of the the, the company. Um, another sort of key um, partnership we've launched is with a company called Lead Hub. Oh yeah, great. Um, yeah. Now, now Lead Hub, they offer um, they're a, they're a data company, uh, mm -hmm. and they offer uh, on market property data um, to estate agents to yeah. create uh, right. they create direct mail. They use the on market data. And then you know if if you're a if you're a vendor and you've got your house up with agent A, um, agent B might be uh, sending you something through your letterbox to to tell you to go with them. Um, that's what they do. And uh, we we've, we've um, set up a partnership with Lead Hub. Lead Hub provide us with um, the data into marketing toolkit in real time, um, and that enables our clients to to do that touting essentially is is what is it to do that prospecting. Uh, and that's what we've done with Lead Hub. So we're really proud of of, of that one as well. And uh, we're, we're going to do more and more of these kind of things, Simon. Sounds great. Sounds really, really, you know, who doesn't need, uh, you know, uh, P, uh, print integrated into their solution like that? It sounds a wonderful uh, combination of the old and the new technologies, doesn't it? Really bringing, I, I always hate that phrase, isn't it? But, you know, omni platform or whatever else, but it, it, it really does deliver, doesn't it? In terms of it's so, it, it's the classic point about it's greater than the sum of its parts when you have both a dig digital experience and a, and a physical experience as well. There's no, there's no replacement for that really at the moment is there well certainly nothing i've seen anyway okay let me just summarize this for the graham if we can and then i know you've got a wonderful kerfuffle deal for our for our kerfuffle members so basically three key, three key, three key takeaways from what i can see people are obviously very receptive to print marketing and, and they're even more so now as we're obviously in this rather unique situation Really, after like months of digital adaption it allows people to obviously engage with your marketing on their own terms rather than having their day interrupted as you talked about with the, the noise of the inbox and everything else. So that's that's the first one, isn't it? Yeah. And, and you pointed out as well, it's no longer a case of print uh, versus digital. A combination, hand in glove of the two together is where we want to be going with this, if you want to get it there. Yeah. Obviously, if, if agents are looking for a print partner, obviously um, that they need to print, build, distribute their print marketing, Obviously, where you're going, where you've always been able to do, adding, adding in tools like Marketing Toolkit and My Ravensworth are only making that job ever easier, aren't they, for the end user to be able to facilitate that? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. All right. The next, whilst whilst uh, we talk about the other uh, deal, let me see if I have my techie knowledge challenged again to be able to share a screen. But let's take you to your your uh, here we are. You've got your obviously fantastic. So four point nine rating, absolutely absolutely stellar stellar reviews there. Obviously, as we can see, reviewed at the um, 
at EMR, so in the top top 40 medals all over the place. And we've got a wonderful little box, as we always do on many of these pages here, exclusive uh, cup of all deal. Um, you're going to be willing to give us, as I understand it, Graham, 50% discount on digital brochures when ordering 16 or more. Yeah, absolutely. So, so if if a if a if a customer orders sixteen or more um, printed brochures, we we will be able to to turn those printed brochures into a digital version for them, so they can send out on on email. It's all trackable as well, so they know who's opened the brochure, who's looked at the brochure, uh, and they can follow up on 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 those sorts of things. And we'll we'll give them we'll design that digital brochure for them. For fifty percent discount, and that we do three three levels of brochure. Um, some of them even include videos uh, and all that kind of stuff, so they're, they're quite interactive. Uh, and that's something that our clients have been asking for, uh, particularly during the COVID pandemic. So we're we're able to do that, and for couple for football members, we'll do fifty percent discount. Perfect. Great. So, guys, obviously, you've got the run-up to Christmas now. Perfect time to test a little bit of new marketing, see if this can be part of your marketing mix for, for 2021, where we're all expecting a very different year to obviously the one we've got now. And if it does, and it will bounce back, my God, how that's going to bounce back. And yeah. standing out from the crowd is going to be you know, ever more important, isn't it? Um, there. Graham, I want to just say thank you very much again. First of all, obviously for joining me on on the on the show again. Secondly, for obviously putting putting the deal there. And I suppose it remains for me to say congratulations on your independence and, and best of luck going forwards. Thanks, Simon. Thanks for having me on today. I, I do appreciate it. It's all great to talk to you. Good stuff. Keep wearing the keep wearing the pink, but not down I the big. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheerio.